every day, 385 tons of used cans, bottles, plastic, and paper products are processed here at the Materials Recycling Facility in Johnston, arriving from cities and towns across Rhode Island. Not that long ago, Rhode Island Resource Recovery accepted all of it at no charge and was able to turn around and sell it at home and abroad. All of that changed dramatically two years ago when China said enough. Mixed in with the recyclables coming from the United States was enough trash that China decided it didn't want to be the world's dump anymore. And that forced resource recovery to enforce a long-standing policy that had been relaxed over the years. Any load that has more than 10% of contaminated material is deemed trash, charged a $250 processing fee, and winds up at the landfill next door at regular tipping fees. A Hummel Report investigation found that two dozen communities in Rhode Island have paid a total of more than a million and a half dollars over the past two and a half years to dispose of recyclables that used to be accepted at no charge. When that truck gets to Johnston and they dump on the tipping room floor, that's when they investigate whether or not the load is acceptable. Eric Earls is the public works director in Pawtucket, which is paying five times more than it did just two years ago for loads rejected in Johnston. When the load gets up to Johnston, it's a person. It's a very um, subjective uh, determination of what, is a, what a rejected load is. And so if that person has been, you know, kind of instructed to, to be more strict on what is uh, or is, is not acceptable, well then that gets reflected in the rejected load. There is a shift in terms of how they're being rejected versus before. Providence DPW Director Leo Parada said the city has made a concerted effort over the past several years to educate residents about what should and shouldn't go into the recycling bin that hits the curb every week. While the city was making progress, the amount it pays for rejected loads is up again this year. In 2018, Providence paid about $460,000 for contaminated loads. That increased to just under $476,000 last year. But the city is on pace for it to jump to nearly $574,000 by the end of the fiscal year in July. This despite inspectors periodically going ahead of crews and the crews themselves scouring recycling bins and leaving trash behind so it does not contaminate a load. While some routes like this one have a driver and someone on the street checking each bin, most routes have just a driver with an automatic arm that lifts the bins up, over, and into a truck. The trucks in both Providence and Pawtucket are equipped with cameras, but that only helps so much. The cameras on the recycling trucks watch as it dumps, right? So if you pick up, uh, if you have an automated truck and it picks up the recycling bin and dumps it, it's going to see whether or not there's contamination in that load. But by then it's in the truck and it's already too late. You've got a contaminated load and the city's going to be on the hook for that when it gets to Johnston. The executive director of Resource Recovery declined our request for an on-camera interview. But he did tell the Hummel Report that the dramatic bottoming out of the worldwide recycling market has forced his agency to crack down on what arrives and in turn what it can sell. In 2018, the agency budgeted making $10.6 million from recyclables. That number dipped to $8.6 million in 2019 and is up to $9.3 million this year. Resource Recovery said cities and towns can station someone at the materials recycling facility if they want to challenge whether a load is contaminated. Some municipalities um, will, will try and um, debate that. If we had a person up there watching our loads come in, we could make the argument that, you know, maybe only 50% of that load should be rejected. Even if we were doing that, we would still pay the $250, you know, kind of equipment charge for them to move the rejected material from the recycling pile to the 
trash pile. So They took issue with my calling it a fine. Do you view it as a fine? I, you know, that's, I, you know, six of these, half dozen of the other, I think. You know, it's $250 that we get hit with. Um, they, they have the equipment up there. They call it an equipment charge. Um, but that equipment is there either way, whether it slides it over to the recycling bin or it slides it over to the trash pile. It's uh, money out of your pocket. Yeah. And I get that it's, you know, they want to have some kind of incentive to motivate. You know, if, if everything that goes up there is going to be trash either way, where's our motivation to clean up the recycling? So I, I kind of understand it. We're all in this together. And my concern is and goal is to do whatever we can to prolong <coughs> the life expectancy of the landfill. North Providence Mayor Charles Lombardi sits on the Board of Commissioners for Resource Recovery, which projects the landfill will be full by the year 2034. North Providence has seen the amount it pays for rejected loads increase more than 10 times in two and a half years. We've had a couple of contaminated loads. Do I like it? Absolutely not. Do I know why? And do I understand? Absolutely. It's all about public awareness, Jim. Um, and, you know, get cooperation from our residents, not only in North Province, all over the state, to recycle and, you know, to increase the diversion of recyclables out of the landfill. And the town has been working with those who have had their bins rejected curbside. We'll take a picture of your home, maybe the apartment complex, and you're saying to us, oh, I recycle, and we show you the picture. Is that recycling? Now, we want to work with you. We don't want to say, okay, we're not going to pick up your trash because then you create a rodent problem. Back in Providence, what goes on the street directly affects the city's budget. You're budgeting for recycling a certain rate, and if you don't meet that, that impacts your budget. And that affects every taxpayer, So, which is the reason why we want to encourage them to recycle properly. Parada said with residents speaking dozens of languages, getting the message across has been a challenge. And sometimes one neighborhood can wipe out the effort of others. You could have a whole route and it may be 10 households that are messing up the whole route. That's it. It's all it takes. And those 10 Containers could be badly contaminated. It could have been a perfectly good load. It would have cost the city absolutely nothing to put it as recyclables. And instead it goes as trash. We get charged an extra 250 because it get rejected and you know, paying the tipping fee at the landfill as garbage. And potentially that impacts our cap. And when we go over the cap, the fee goes even higher. So that affects everyone. So, Someone doing the wrong thing, 10 people doing the wrong thing, a route can mess up one truck. The unexpected increase in cost is forcing many municipalities to give residents a refresher course on what should be going into the recycling bin every week. In Pawtucket, like many communities, crews will put a label on an unacceptable bin and offer a number for someone to call and find out why it was left in front of their house. So when they come out and see the recycling wasn't picked up, they're not going to, there'll be some understanding. And so they can call or they can read the information. Um, and then there's an explanation. When you and call. then there's an explanation. And you hope that that gets the point across. Parada says it's a simple message in Providence. When in doubt, we say throw it out. Just put it in the trash. Do your basics. Paper, you know, plastic bottles, glass, cans. If you stick to the basics, we'll be successful. Dane Johnston, Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.